<sighs> Hello, friends. Welcome to a chaotic birthday video by Carpo. Myself, in third person. Today is my 48th birthday. It's a weird one, to say the least. I originally anticipated making a video uh, just discussing life in general. I had a few topics, and then this morning I was th thrown through the ringer a little bit. So I woke up this morning and uh, I got a text from my mom that she was struggling really bad. And she got COVID about six weeks ago. And now I believe, according to her, she has long COVID. And uh, she hasn't been able to move. She hasn't been able to make herself food. She hasn't been hungry, hasn't been able to sleep. And she's in her 70s and she's generally miserable at this point. Uh, because of this, you know, un inability to function. And not only that, but her heater went out in the middle of the night last night. And it's pretty cold, you know. It's at frost temperature here. Not that cold, but cold enough to where not having a heater makes a big difference. And she lives, uh, rents a cottage from someone. So anyhow, I, uh, I went over there. I brought her a heater. And in the meantime, was getting ready to go down with my other friend and visit a friend who has brain cancer. And he has, uh, I think, glioma. He's had a tumor in his brain for the last year or two. And uh, they've tried chemotherapy, radiation. And apparently the other night he had a seizure. And so they took him to the hospital. And they didn't think he had very long to go. So... My buddy and I said, well, let's go down there and see him in Eugene. So the intention was to leave my mom's house and go home and then get a ride down or drive down to his house and then get a ride down to Eugene. And uh, as I was getting ready to go, I got a call from him and he said, yeah, Doug just died. Doug, he's about my age. He was about my age. Um, I'd known him since I was about 14. We grew up together. His brother and I were like best of friends. We've known each other for 30 years and 35 years. And uh, Doug was never a very close friend of mine, but he was a friend of mine. And I respected the guy and, you know, I knew him. And especially when you're one of your best friends has a brother that dies before he's 50. Um, it's, it's indescribable for most people. We have a very close knit friend group of the three of us, myself, my friend, Kevin and Scott, we talk about many things. Scott still has both of his parents who were older than our parents were. And he's very fortunate for that. Uh, my friend Kevin and I, our fathers died like a year or two apart when we were 14. So we have always connected on that lost father. But my friend had his, Scott had his full family. And his grandma died recently at like 101 or something. And uh, so, you know, they had a pretty, pretty good lives. And this came as a shocker. So the point is that I was going to go down and visit him. Then I got the call that he'd already died. And I felt horrible. I really wanted to go down and see him and see him before he passed. But I also realized that it would be better that his family be there together without, you know, other people around. It's, it's very difficult. This year has been very difficult to navigate. My, uh, my wife's, my mother-in-law, my wife's mom just died about a month ago. Uh, sorry, it's been about two months now, probably. It could have even been three months because time has just gone by so damn fast lately. And uh, she she was 82 or 81 or 82. Um, she'd had a she'd had a good life, but she you know nobody's ready to see somebody go like that. And we're still coping with this. It's been an ongoing thing for a year because my wife was the executor and has to deal with all of the things to do with the bills and the house and everything else. 
So she's been over there trying to clean up and not to, you know, offend, but she was a hoarder, my mother-in-law. So she had a lot of stuff. She was pretty organized with it, but she had a lot of stuff. So we have maybe four months to clean out the house and figure out what to do with it, whether to sell it, to keep it. Um, they've, you know, all these mortgages, uh, like uh, the uh, second mortgage that was taken on the place, these types of things. It's neither here nor there. It's this. This is only relevant to point out the fact that we've been dealing with this consistently, this chaos, and then this happens, and my mom's issues happen, and on top of it, my dog's been sick for like a month, and uh, then I read about a respiratory illness that is going around the country and killing dogs, that there's no solution for that that, you know, the vets, doctors have no idea what the virus is. And uh, it's just, it seems like it's never ending. So I hope this is still recording because I, uh, I'm recording on a new camera right now. My wife, bless her heart, bought me a GoPro 11 for my uh, birthday today. And I love it. <laughs> I actually had a GoPro 7 before, a Hero 7, and uh, loved it. And I've been trying to get another one, find another one, but it's time to upgrade. And this camera will help me do a little more focused vlogging. And it has many different you know, connections to be able to do live streaming on the go, things like that. And that doesn't seem to matter. It seems petty to even talk about cameras or anything else when you're talking about people who have died. But you have to. Life must go on. When my friend said that they were planning the celebration of his life already, I thought that was beautiful to me. It was music to my ears. There's nothing worse than going and groveling and grieving over somebody who's dead when you know that you're the one who's suffering, not them. If there is an afterlife, if there isn't an afterlife, doesn't matter. The person has passed on to wherever zone I know a lot of people think of that as like colorful language, um, as uh, our our good friend George Carlin would say, it's um, uh, soft language, saying somebody passed away, rather than saying, yeah, they're dead, they died. Dead is as real as it gets, and people don't like to think about it, they don't like to talk about it, but it's extremely important to come to terms with mortality. The fact that we are all, all mortal. You may be in your family unit and be discussing, oh, so-and-so died and so-and-so died, not realizing or maybe ignoring on purpose that at any one moment you could be in a car accident and another statistic. And so we try to understand the world through spirituality or religion or just acceptance of inevitable. Regardless of whether we believe in something greater than ourselves or not, we're ultimately all privy to the same information, which is very weak as to what goes beyond us. My psychedelic journeys have taken me to places where I am utterly convinced that there's more to this world than just this three-dimensional reality. Yet I refuse to ever, ever let that become, let's just say, I refuse to, to take some other human's version of this, of an experience I've never had myself, and, and, and make the claim that this is what's truth. There is a heaven, there is an afterlife, or there is no heaven, there is no afterlife, there is a spiritual realm, there are angels, there aren't angels. Forget it, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you perceive the world in your own mind. That, as corny as it sounds, your perceptions are like 90% of your life and how you feel about life. A person who has spent years in prison may be more than happy to walk down a shady looking alley compared to where he's been. A person who has grown up with a silver spoon may have a hard time even driving down a street with buildings they don't, you know, enjoy the architecture of. 
that's a horrible way to put it, but the point is, I'm glad to be a slightly white trash, broke ass dude in America, because it allows me to really appreciate the things that I do have. Because it doesn't matter how much wealth you have, it doesn't matter how much fame you have, it, it doesn't matter who you are or what your status is. When you lose somebody, somebody you know dies, you still have to deal with it like every other human being. And that's hard. So the best wealth that we can build within are the wealth and riches of acceptance and understanding. And I don't mean understanding like having the answers, that's different. I mean understanding that we can't understand. I don't know why one of my friends died on my birthday. I don't know why one of my friends died so young. I don't know why so many people have to mourn that loss, nor do I know why people even need to mourn a loss. I don't know why we think the way we think, why we feel like we feel, but I know that all of our emotions are integrated and entwined within this historical context of connection to other people. That is the bare bones, most important thing. When you throw everything out and everything gets set aside, what matters most is your connection to other people and how you interact with them. It's the most important thing is our ability to make friends and to keep family around. It's going to be hard because there are gonna be some people we don't wanna interact with. There will be people in our lives that are negative and bring us down. There are some people who say, if I interact with so-and-so, they, they, it's positive for me and I, it brings me up. Other people say, if I interact with so-and-so, it brings me down. It depends on where you are in your mind. Nobody's better than another. Nobody has more answers than another. Even the grumpiest old man who's groveling at everything in his life, when he's on his deathbed, he's processing the same shit as we all are. Ignorance is not bliss, but it can definitely allow us to see things differently. And when I say ignorance, I mean ignoring, literally by definition, ignoring certain things that we know to be true or that we think to be true in order to have a life that's more conducive to how we want to live it. It's been a weird day. I felt like by making a video I could process this better and try to understand my own feelings about losing somebody that I knew at such a young age and how my best friend must be just out there, you know, crying his eyes out right now if he's not half loaded on Valium, which I wouldn't blame him. We need to cope with our emotions, but we also need to be able to keep cool and it's hard. I have a brother. Let's put it this way. The guy that died, Doug, he was my age. And his brother is a couple of years, a few years younger, Scott. Scott has been one of my best friends for years. We go to dead shows and shit together all the time. So I knew Doug, but he was a military guy and he wasn't really conducive with m how I thought about life. He, he was a little more on the aggro side sometimes but he was a sweetheart, don't get me wrong, at least when we were younger. But while my friend was, you know, a hippie like me and we went to dead shows. So Scott was the younger brother, Doug was the older brother. In our side, I was the older brother and my brother Nick was the younger brother. And we would interact, but we'd hang out. My brother and I would buy weed from Scott because he'd sell us these rip off eighths where he'd pinch like a gram and a half out of it and you'd get like this 2.5 bag that he'd leave for like 40 45 bucks in this little tube and he'd leave the cash and yeah it was a drug dealer for a while um bad one but he made money <laughs> he got his nugs um let's just say i love all these guys you know these are bros that i have no problem saying i love you giving them a hug and uh they, my, my little brother, for example, it really gave me a perspective when Scott's older brother died. 
to thinking, you know, even if you don't really talk much or get along or hang out much, if your fucking brother dies, your brother, at a young age, it's a travesty. Doug had joined the military. He'd gone to Iraq. He had fought and then joined a... Um, he worked for a subcontractor and the family believes that the burn pits in Iraq may have contributed to the, the brain cancer, the tumor, whereas a lot of other soldiers have had similar issues. I'm not going to sit here and point the finger and blame because I don't know for sure. I know that I had the same feeling when my father passed when I was 14 years old, 15, and I watched him die in the living room as his cancer spread and his abdomen bulged out like he was pregnant and his liver got infected, his kidneys, his brain, and he lost what he could say. And the whole time, we figured it was from Vietnam, Agent Orange. It may have been. The doctor said it could have been that, or it could have been growing up in Detroit and having, you know, uh, being exposed to all these chemicals in the area. We just don't know. And that's the most frustrating thing. When we lose people, when people die, when people get cancer, at least, we don't know. We just can't know. And we make assumptions about it. We try to wrap our heads around what's going on. And when you extend that to our own personal lives, we also don't know what's going on. So for the fact that a friend of mine died on my birthday today, I'm going to use this as a tool for the rest of my life. Every one of my birthdays, I'm going to remember and reminisce about the time that my friend died. Whether you're close or not, anytime you lose somebody, it's painful. Didn't mean to make this a depressing video. I was just trying to clear the air and clear my thoughts on this topic, and I hope I've done so. And I hope that the camera worked because I've never recorded on this GoPro. So I will uh, talk to you all next time. I appreciate you. It's kind of hard to focus and function right now because I'm a little, a little clouded in my mind. But sometimes with the clouds comes a clear day. Just have to work out the rain. Peace out.